Welcome to Vision Auto Garage. Today I'm back on the Rowdy Metro working on the turbo back exhaust system. Over the last two weeks I've been collecting parts for the exhaust system and doing some research as I go. I don't have everything I need to complete the system today but I'm going to push on and finish what I can. The main structure of the system will be these 3 inch 180 degree 304 stainless mandrel bends. They have a centre line radius one and a half times the diameter and a 2mm wall thickness. They're very stout and rather weighty but will do nicely for my system. I've reclaimed the turbo flange from the original Audi TT downpipe. New ones are available but I'd rather save the money and recycle what I can. My goal is to have a road legal car so I'll need to comply with MOT emissions. I've bought a Magnaflow 200 cell catalytic converter and with Mario Andretti on the box I don't doubt that it's going to be fit for purpose. Most factory road cars have cats with around 400 cells per inch, bringing them way below any emission restrictions, with an inevitable compromise to exhaust flow. With Mario out of his box, he's offered up to one of the bends and is a really nice push fit, which will help a lot with assembly. But for now, Mario can go back in his box. There's a ton of information and theories around about exhaust performance, specifically back pressure and why it is or isn't a bad thing. My very simple understanding is that, specifically in a turbo application, it's a really bad thing. And in all cases, it's a compromise and the drawbacks can be minimised. The ideal turbo back exhaust system would be none at all. It's all about getting the exhaust gases out of the combustion chamber and maintaining volumetric efficiency. Exhaust gas leaves the cylinder under pressure, and it's this pressure that drives the turbine, before exiting through the exhaust system. The turbine itself creates back pressure, as an object in the path of the flow, but we need this back pressure to make choo-choo, so we compromise. The cat is the most restrictive component in an exhaust system, the densely packed cells obstruct the gas flow, effectively pushing back against it, making back pressure. Then one or more silencers have the same effect. This back pressure builds up to resist the spinning of the turbine, slowing spool up and eventually limiting turbine speed. It's also a factor pushing against the spring of an internal wastegate. Anyway, Mario, my 200 cell cat, flows more gas than a stock 400 cell cat, so it's better. I've cleaned up the exhaust flange as best I can and fit it up to the turbo housing so I can mock up the system. It will snake its way through the bends incorporating the wideband O2 sensor, Mario and a silencer.
the flange is tightened down and I've trimmed a few inches off the first bend so that it clears the suspension tower. When I'm happy with the positioning, it's tacked in place. The cat is then positioned and aligned, and then tacked. There's a fair amount of weight hanging on the few tacks, so the system is removed to be fully welded on the bench. It's wiped down with acetone to remove all grease and surface contaminants. Ideally, I'd fuse weld all the joints, but there's a gap to fill around the flange and I'll need to use stainless filler rod. Mario can be fuse welded on, using no filler rod because it's a nice tight fit. This means I can use less heat with less chance of sugaring on the inside. If I was made of money or being paid for this job, I'd purge the system to avoid it. But it's not essential and won't have any noticeable ill effects.
Next, the second 180 degree bend is positioned and tacked before being removed to the bench and welded. I've had to use a few dabs of filler because I pulsed too many amps and blew through the thinner cat steel. Once cooled, the growing system is fitted back onto the turbo. I'm really pleased with the progress on the exhaust system, but I've gone as far as I can for the day. I need to order a short straight through silencer to go on the end of this tube, and that will go into a 90 degree pipe straight to the floor. I also need to weld in the O2 sensor boss here when that arrives, and fabricate a bracket to support the whole system here. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and the series so far. If you have, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And if you want notifications about the videos, please click the bell and don't forget to check out Facebook and Instagram for more updates. Thanks for watching.